Hey guys, Jason here with Salt River Leather. We got Christmas coming right around the corner and I thought what better way to kick off the channel than to give you a couple items that you can make fairly simply using the same techniques with just three basic tools. And we're gonna use some of our scrap leather we have left over. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, here's our scrap piece of leather we're gonna use today, guys. And what we're gonna make is a key fob, a bracelet, and a watch band. Uh, we got our hardware over here, got our tools right here. We got a blade with a fresh blade in it. We got a straight edge to cut against. And then we got something to make some holes so we can put some of that hardware in. First item I wanna start with today is our key fob. So what we need first is to get a straight, clean cut down this. Just hold your straight edge to it. Get your blade. Start at one end, go to the other. Okay. Since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna turn this straight edge around. I just made this straight edge, so I have a guide to go off of here. everything up and then what I'll do is just run this right down that edge okay so I've got that we'll set that up there okay I find with these that a good distance to have is about 10 and 3 quarters, 10 and a half, if you want it to be a little bit smaller. If you want it larger, you can go as large as this is. This is an 18 inch ruler, and we are pushing it right at about 16 inches, so uh, it's really up to you. Now, as you can see, we got a hole there. We'll run our screw through here. There it is. So these button studs, they're threaded. They just screw right on. Let's shoot that finger on. Okay, so that's locked on there like that. So then all we need now is a little hole right there. And we'll run that through there. it and so to make the receiving hole for the button stud you're going to use two different holes always have the smaller one that's kind of your relief hole and then the hole that the button stud is going to rest in the majority of the time can either be the largest one okay. or the next one down let's start with the, so we the second this. largest and one and then we will uh, okay. okay so you see we got a hole there and now I'm going to turn this and go to this smaller hole. We're going to make this hole and then we will cut a line between the two holes. I'll show you what that means. Okay, so we have two holes there and now we're going to cut a line between the two. Okay, so we got a line there. Now I'll just take this, put it over that. Voila. Next, we're going to do the bracelet. A good width for a bracelet is probably about a half an inch. You can start with a half inch and try that. So again, I'll turn this around since I'm right handed. I'll set it to half an inch all the way down. And since we've got a straight edge to work off of, which is very important, this makes it very easy. So we will cut long strip of this okay so we got a long strip of that let's go ahead and we will so we got two curved ends here let's just square off one and that's and then we'll round the corners on it just like we did on finish so got some round corners there for this we'll just go to our third one here and we will put 
put a hole right in the middle. There. Okay. We'll take our screw. Run right up through. So if I hold this right here, I can see that that's a pretty comfortable feeling on my wrist. I can roll that around, it'd be nice. So if I hold this with my hand here, take my pencil, or if there's any blemishes or markings on the leather, you can kind of see where those would be. But the pencil will leave a little bit of an indentation there. So I'll take that off. Again. We'll go to the second to largest setting there. So we will, okay, there's that. that. Right. Flip over to this. There you go. Now let's get our knife and we'll cut the line between the two. This here is a basic utility knife. Got other knives for other purposes. Works really well. Okay, let's test this before we cut the end off. Okay, so that goes in there like that. Okay, so it fits, it lines up, looks good. Let's try it on my wrist. Now, if you're making this for yourself, you can always test that. If you're making it for somebody else, you may not be able to test that. Okay, there we go. So, it fits around my wrist really nicely. The nice thing about the button stud is that uh, if you need to, you can move around pretty easy. It's easy to get on and off, but still secure. I've got a seven-year-old son that has a bracelet like this. He's never lost it. It always stays on. If you have kids, you know that's pretty good. All right. So now that we've done this, we'll just come up here. Let's try this distance. That looks good to me. Let's try it on. Right. There you go. Got your nice little comfortable bracelet. Right. Now, take this same concept and we'll move on and do a watch band. Okay, let's move on to the watch band. Right now, we've got our watch face and a button stud. That's really the only hardware we need. Main thing is to make sure that your watch face still has the pins from the previous band that was on it. If you don't have those, it's hard to do this next thing. So the pins are what you run the band through once you get the button stud added on and you know the size of the wrist it needs to go to. The distance between here, coming here, going around the bottom, and coming here, coming out this side, is very important. So once you measure somebody's wrist, you have to add the additional distance of this. Each watch face is different, so you'll have to kind of see what watch you have and add that additional items to it. Otherwise, if you just measure the wrist and add this onto it, it's gonna to be too tight because you're gonna take up a little bit of space going down here this way and then coming back up this way. So it's just a little bit of added extra. Um, and again, each watch face is different, so you'll have to kind of measure the watch face you're gonna use for that. So let's go ahead and cut this piece. I kind of preset it just because uh, it's a little wonky. This is in inches. Generally, these are going to be in um, metric, so you're going to have to, they range from 18 to 22, uh, and you'll just kind of have to see what you have. Okay, here we go. So we're going to run this here. Okay, first thing we need to do is we're going to take the wash face and put it on the leather. All right, so let's run this down through here like this. Okay. Okay, so I clearly have some to cut off, but if I hold it up against my wrist, what I do know is that I like the button stud to be on this side. If you like it the other side, you're going to have to put the shorter end over here and then 
have uh, this be the longer end on this side. You really don't want the button stud to land on the bottom of your wrist, so it needs to land here or it needs to land here. It's really a personal preference, but I like it this way, so I'm gonna do it. If you make it for somebody and they wanna shift it and they wanna change it, all they have to do is remove it and turn the watch face over and it'll work just fine. So for me, I know I like the short end on this side. I know I like the long end coming around this way. It makes it easier for me to take on and off because I'm right-handed. So here we go. Okay, next step is to make the holes that we need and then we'll put on the hardware. Now, one thing to remember with this, especially a new leather like this, over time, this is gonna get a little bit tighter as it's on and off the wrist. Um, you know, when you take a shower, you're gonna take this off. This is an oil tan leather, it will stretch. And so you wanna make sure that you leave hole, like an additional hole in case they need a little bit tighter. And so I would recommend if you measure the distance of the wrist and you want to put it on the exact mark that's fine but i would also go a little bit this way quarter of an inch make another hole so that over time they can take that button stud out and put it there and then uh, make it tighter and make sure it fits snugly as they wear it just a, a tip through experience there This may be, yeah, there we go. No, that's fine. Okay, so I can tell you right now, this leather is gonna stretch, and so I'm definitely gonna want that extra hole, but right now, that's pretty good, pretty snug on my wrist. I don't need to do anything about that, so I'll take this off and kind of finish this off. For these, I also like to do a straight cut with kind of rounded corners. Makes it a, look a little bit nicer um, than just the angle cut like the key fob originally started with. So we'll take it off and do that. before this is something that if you don't like that distance if you think it should be more if you think it should be less cuts there okay and then I'm gonna come back I'm gonna make one more hole what size let's go with the right size okay and I'll make one more hole about let's say So here we go. It's good that this is snug right here to get on and off. That way it won't be falling off or anything like that. But same concept as the bracelet, just as I said with my son, it doesn't come off for him and it's fine. Let's show you all three pieces. All right guys, here's our three finished pieces side by side, all from that scrap piece of leather, um, which I still got enough to make a couple other things off of, but it's really nice leather. Um, and you can do really simple, nice Christmas gifts that people will appreciate. Hopefully you learned a lot. Hopefully uh, you uh, have the confidence to start working with some leather. You can get it uh, in scraps. You can get it by the square foot from some sellers. Some sellers will make you buy a whole side. So uh, just kind of do some research there. Best things to do, just reach out, talk to them. Share in the comments how you like this. Let me know what you think. Uh, we're gonna be making more content. Uh, any tips, any anything that you want to see me make, let me know. I make all kinds of stuff.